Welcome to First United Lutheran Church. This is the message from Sunday. It's our prayer that this message touches your heart and helps to guide you in your life. Let's listen. If you want to pick up your poinsettia, there's plastic bags in the back by the sound booth. Uh, the Adopta family from WOW, that went real well this year. Thank you to everyone there. Uh, mission trip fundraiser, the meal, thanks for all your support there. The gingerbread house number two, the praying for Kentucky was the big winner. <laughs> that was um, quite ingenious, I think, to come up with that one. Uh, good Christmas program last week. Thanks to Dean for Christmas Eve service. We appreciate that. Uh, season two of the Chosen video series in Bible study will start on the 9th, Sunday evening. Men's breakfast uh, starting in January. That's the beginning of our fifth year of men's breakfast. And our speaker will be Mike Dieter. So that should be interesting listening to Mike on uh, just his life and things that he's been involved in. Uh, quite interesting. Any other announcements this morning? Okay. You could still make time for lefsa. There's oh. potatoes, so you could still make lefsa if you didn't get enough the other night. That, uh, yeah, you've got time to get that done yet. Uh, any prayer requests this morning that aren't in the bulletin or on the screen there for us? If not, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, and it's with grateful hearts that we come and say thank you. Thank you for the birth of your son Jesus and the gift of salvation that he brought to earth to explain to us, to teach us about that, and to give us the gift that, that you have given through him, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, And we thank you for the gift of healing, comfort, and support, and we ask that upon Ray, Joanne, Renee, Sean, and Tyler, watch over them in the military, to Vicki, Sophie, Carol, and Ada. Lord, we lift up each one of these people, and they do have different needs, but they do need you. They need your healing. They need your comfort and support. We lift up Mark and Danielle and Gary and Minnie, and we, we say thank you for those that are in the mission field that have raised their hand and said, send me, Lord, I'm willing to go. We thank you for them and, and all that they do. And Lord, we also ask a special blessing and gift of protection upon all of our family members and the many family members that are traveling today, those that have to go back to their respective homes. We thank you for the time that we have had together with them over the holidays here and over the Christmas time. But watch over them, give them safe travels, and get them back to their homes safely. We lift up this service to you, Lord. The music, the songs, the message is all in your glory, in your name. Amen. The psalm this morning comes to us from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will exalt the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered all by all who delight in them. Glorious and maj majestic are his deeds. And his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever, holy and awesome in his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Let's stand for our opening song, I Saw Three Ships. Yes. 
be seated. <clears throat> we continue with our confessions and forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Our first reading today is from Exodus, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 15. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me every firstborn male, the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. Then Moses said to the people, Commemorate this day, the day you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, because the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand. And down to 11. After the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and gives it to you, as he promised an, on oath to you and your ancestors, you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. In days to come, when your son asks you, what does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed the firstborn of both people and animals in Egypt. This is why I sacrificed to the Lord the first male offspring of every womb and redeem each of my firstborn sons. And then from Colossians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since all members of one body, you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, praise, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all to, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God, the Father, through him. Here ends the lesson. Let us um, stand and together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we receive the offering this morning, uh, let's sing together our next hymn. As you're seated, um, greet someone with Christmas morning greetings. I know it's the day after Christmas, but uh, still great to have everyone here this morning. Oh, and as, yes, 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 for the reading of the gospel, let's remain standing. Um, Luke. Chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the whole and Oh, that was... There we go again. Ah, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. 
it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and he praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now, there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. And she never left the temple, but she worshipped night and day, fasting and praying, and coming up to them at that very moment. She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. And when Mary, or Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Thus ends the reading of the gospel. Uh, you may be seated. <clears throat> so I'm going to share a little bit about Simeon and Anna this morning. But uh, first, I'm very, very grateful for all the hardy souls that roused themselves in this cold weather and got here to church this morning. This is, this is a blessing. I thought maybe there'd be three, maybe one. And if it was only me, I would still share the sermon, but it'd probably be a little shorter. But there is, um, there is a story about that. There was a, a pastor on a morning like this cold morning. He was a rural uh, pastor of a rural parish. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of folks out there that raise cattle and so forth. And uh, lo and behold, it was a morning just like this. And the only person that showed up for the service was one old farmer. And he asked the pastor, well, are, are we going to have a service this morning? There's only you and I. So the pastor said, well, you know, he was a farmer too. He said, if I have a herd of cows and there's only one cow that comes to get uh, into the barn in the morning, I will still feed that single cow. Very well. So the old farmer sat down and the pastor started in and he went on and on and on and on half hour went by still he continued 45 minutes went on finally after a solid hour of speaking he closed and they and he sang a hymn and then he went to the back of the church as was his custom you know to shake hands with the parishioners as they came out and uh, there was one farmer, he was still, still the only one in church. He came there and he said, you know, pastor, I'm with you. If only one cow comes, I'll still feed that cow, but I'll be darned if I'm going to give him the whole load of hay. <laughs> and so this morning... I'm going to share some thoughts, and it won't be a full hour of preaching, but, uh, but that's okay. Uh, so many of you were here on, on uh, Christmas Eve service, and uh, there was one little postscript that I wanted to add to that message. We had been talking about the 
the shepherds. Spent a lot of time talking about the shepherds and how they came to the uh, to the uh, they were the ones that the angels came to to tell about the birth of Jesus, and of all the people that were there available to be have the angels come to. I mean, there there were businessmen, there was innkeepers, there were. Many, 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 many guests that were in Bethlehem. Obviously, the inn was full. So why on earth did, they, did the angels choose to come to the shepherds? Well, it isn't that they were the only righteous people. Uh, and it wasn't that they were so poor that they deserved something special from God. You know, we think about all of these different things that make it, we we, we try to put a reason why they came to the shepherds, but um, the fact is, it is not wealth or lack of wealth that determines entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Nothing to do with our social position. It is strictly those who re- are willing to receive the message about the Christ. Those were the ones to whom the angels appeared that night. And uh, then we continue on with, uh, with this little section of Scripture. So I'm going to reread a little portion of this, and then we'll uh, unpack it a little bit. S- then Simeon... Okay, so the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul also. So the, the message that I've got this morning is that the eyes that see salvation, like Simeon's, lead to a voice that speaks about salvation. So there's a few thoughts about this. Simeon, when he had seen the Christ child, he spoke about it immediately. In fact, the Spirit was upon him to give a prophecy. And I want to take note here that we can infer from this text that Simeon was probably well advanced in years. When he says, Lord, let now your servant depart in peace, it kind of implies. uh, It's an indication that he had lived his whole life in anticipation of this very, very moment and that now he had seen the one sight that his eyes had been waiting for. And now having seen it, his soul, his spirit is at peace. He's ready to go home, depart, be in the company of God. But take a note of this. Being advanced in years did not mean his usefulness was either diminished or finished. In fact, what we have seen here is that probably or could be the very, very, very closing days of Simeon's life. He made the prophecy of his entire life. And I want to break this open a little bit. Under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, he says that this innocent little infant, who is now cradled in his mother's arms, how can he see this? An innocent baby. He says this child is going to be an instrument of great division in Israel. So we bring it into the Hebrew, the, into the Greek words here. The first word that he says is, "He will be, he will cause the falling and the rising." So the falling, that word is a, it's a Greek word which means a crash or a downfall. Jesus was going to be a crossroads, a decision point, and a very marker. In the life of all of the people in Israel, they would have to decide if they're going to go this way or if they're going to go this way. Now, the, one that, the next word is a very, very interesting word. 
he says the rising of many people in Israel. Okay, again, the Greek word here is anastasin. So what does that mean? Well, if you look it up in Strong's Dictionary, this is what it says. It means more a resurrection. The word is a standing up again. Okay, in other words, someone has been knocked down flat, this person, Jesus Christ, is going to be the person who is responsible for their rising up again. But there's more to it. A resurrection from death is one of the meanings, but also a moral recovery raised to life again, to rise from the dead, to rise again. Now, think about this. This man, Simeon, probably ignored by most people that came into the temple. Here's, here's an old guy, just kind of parked up against wherever. Day after day after day after day, people come into the temple. They've got business to do. They're, they're in a rush. They get their sacrifices taken care of. They might greet somebody that's there. Here's the old man. The old man, year after year, sitting there, and all of a sudden, one day, comes a young, young mother, Mary and Joseph. And they bring this little child, and uh, they bring him in for the priest to do the circumcision. And as Simeon sees this little boy, he makes this prophecy. Think about this. All of the important people, the important religious people, the high priests, the Pharisees, all of these people, they're not listening evidently to the Spirit of God, but this old man who has dedicated his entire life sees this little boy and he makes this prophecy. How significant that all of the work, the words, the writings, the actions, the deeds of all of the great and mighty holy ones in the temple, they're gone and forgotten. I have no idea what some of the sayings of Caiaphas were. Do you? None? I, I don't know. I'm, I suppose he said many things. Or Annas, or Caiaphas, or any of the others. The only people that we have any impression from is the people that were associated with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Simeon here, in his very, very, very last days, makes his prophecy, and they ring down through history, as they have to many, 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 many millions of people. And think about the significance of this. The thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Jesus was a crossroads. What people thought about him translated into deeds in their lives as it was spoken here. And he also gives a tender word to Mary that a sword will pierce her heart, her soul. She will see her very son, crucified. That isn't the end of this. This is going on, as we try to picture this going on in the temple, okay? I mean, this is, this is amongst the crowd. There's, there's probably hundreds of people milling around, going, going on or going on. Simeon comes up, takes this little baby, and makes his prophecy about that. And just as he is finishing his prophecy, here comes a very aged woman for those times, 84 years old. She comes up. She is also an extremely devout person. It says that she worshipped night and day. She fasted and prayed. And here she comes. Just as Simeon is closing off his, his final few words, the Holy Spirit is also speaking to Anna, this aged lady. Don't ever, 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 ever let anybody tell you 
that your days of effectiveness and worthiness are over. You know, I've had people tell me that um, I should just quit, and maybe they're right. <laughs> maybe they're right. But do not ever let people give you the in, uh, intimation that because you're old, your days are done, your ministry is over. Absolutely not. I mean, yes, I've used the example of Moses. He was 80 years old when he went into ministry. But these are two wonderful additional examples of inspiration to us, no matter what period of our life we are in. Here she comes up. At that very moment, the Holy Spirit is upon her too. And she says, you know, she gives thanks. Then she, it doesn't give us a lot of her specific words that she gave, but also at the end of her days, God had given her the favor that she would see the Son of God also. And we have her life and ministry as an inspiration that's lasted all these hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. One of the most inspiring stories right here. Out of the entire New Testament, I take, I take it that these two old folks, old what is old? Define old. God gave to them the grace of seeing the birth of Christ. So I talk about being too old to minister. I want to make one other point here this morning. You're also never too young to minister. Just prior to this uh, piece of scripture here, John the Baptist, who was not yet born, but was in the womb of Elizabeth, when Mary came close, his spirit recognized the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gave her a kick. <laughs> what do I take from that? My, my take on that is that even before we are born, the Spirit of God is communicating and working in our spirits. So I'm not going to make a big, long point about that, but I want to make it emphasized here still that in the year 2021, it is still true that the Spirit of God is moving in the lives, in the body of the unborn. Um, not too young, not too old. The Spirit of God is speaking to all. The eyes that see salvation lead to lips that speak salvation. A couple of examples. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 10, made a very interesting comment. And it, it, uh, it goes to the point of uh, Simeon. Uh, 10 verse 34, Jesus said, I Do not think that I came to bring peace on this earth. I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. For um, I came to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother, her mother-in-law, so that a man's enemies will be the very members of his own household. Take a look back then at what Simeon had said. This child is, cause, is destined to cause the falling and the rising, the death and the resurrection, the beginning and the end, the turning of the right and the turning to the left of many in Israel. And he will be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and, a, and then to Mary. A sword will pierce your life. Prophecy, I think, from God, because it certainly came to pass that not only for Israel did they did He divide one against the other. He, he just it, you've seen a stream, perhaps, where there's an island, and the water is forced to go one way or the other around this island, and you know it's. Uh, 
It's just an analogy, but that is what Christ is. He is the island of dividing of waters. He is the island of dividing of spirits and souls. Think about the Pharisees, how he divided the Pharisees. They either loved him or they hated him. There was either Nicodemus. You know, just because someone was a Pharisee didn't mean they were evil. I, I, I never want to imply that. Because they were devout, some of them got you know, off in the weeds. But there were those like Nicodemus who came to him at night and recognized him as a great teacher of the law. That's one who was resurrected, morally resurrected, as the implication of the word is. Others were divided and began to hate him. Think about the Romans. You know, we talk about the Romans as evil, horrible people. I look at Pilate. Think about the day when Pilate judged Jesus. Pilate had the sight and the vision to see, I find no fault in this person. Pilate was actually a pretty astute individual as we think about it. Did he become a disciple of Christ? We don't know. Maybe he did. I've often wondered who recorded that conversation that Pilate had with Jesus. Where did that come from? None of the disciples were there to hear that conversation where Pilate said, what is truth? No one was there to, 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 that we know of. We don't know who was there when Pilate asked him, are you a king? Have you come to be a king? Was it Pilate's wife who had had a dream about? Probably not. I've often wondered about that. Jesus was, of course, he was there. And he came back and he may have communicated to John what kind of a conversation they had in that palace room. I don't know. Maybe it was that later Pilate himself became one who was morally resurrected. It wasn't just the Jews. It was all Gentiles that these prophecies are for. Where did that come from? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that Pilate was seeing something in Jesus that was exceptional, unusual, and very, very righteous. Where, um, on the other side of this equation, causing the falling and the death and the downfall of many people, the Pharisees who were studiers of the law, students of the law, they were out there screaming for his death. They were bloodthirsty for murder. Pilate just acquiesced to them in a moment of weakness. I, I don't know. I don't judge Pilate. That's going to be God's decision. But as we think about this, we'll wrap this up and come bring this to a close. The eyes that see salvation... And there are many, 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 many eyes here this morning that have seen the salvation of Christ. The eyes that see salvation lead to lips that speak the words of salvation as in the lives of these two senior citizens that we read about this morning. May these thoughts and these words, I'll leave that with us this morning, to be an inspiration to us. It led to inspiration for Mary and Joseph, and uh, may it be for us as well. I'll close with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the fact that age is not the deciding factor in the effectiveness of ministry. Thank you for the young. Thank you for the old. Thank you for all of the faithful that you have called to your service and help us to renew that dedication here at this Christmas season. 
I pray that you'd be with our families. I pray that you would lead us to be leaders of our families. I pray that you'd give us wisdom in these troubled times that are upon us. They're no more, they're no less troubled than any other times in history. The times when Jesus was born were, were also very, very brutal times. All times during this fallen age are difficult. But I pray, Lord, that you would give us wisdom and help us to be like Anna and like Simeon, to seek your face, to humble our hearts before you, to let you speak to us, because surely your Holy Spirit is as real today as he was in the days of Simeon and Anna. Thank you for this story. Bless us as we fellowship together and uh, prepare for the initiation of a brand new year. We ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Let's rise together and pray together the Lord's Prayer and then we will, we will sing our closing hymn. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us those as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So let's close singing together, Angels We Have Heard on High. receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. 
Thank you for listening to this message from First United Lutheran Church.